This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Hello, and welcome back to another broadcast of Understanding China. I am Xiaofang, coming to you from the Think Tech station in beautiful downtown Honolulu. Through this series, we show China from the inside through Chinese eyes. How is immense, complex, and the beautiful country of China developing and changing? How do Chinese people see themselves and their role in the world? What are their hopes and the visions? Today, we are fortunate to catch Roger Epstein, a leading attorney and a legal expert, on a brief visit to Honolulu. Roger has been a guest lecturer in international law at Beijing Foreign Study University in the center of the capital of China for two months and uh, is returning there tomorrow to complete the spring semester. Roger has uh, seen a big, dynamic slice of life in China, connecting with the bright mind of some of its leading students and has a lot to share. So Roger, thanks to uh, taking time and join us. Hey, you're welcome, Xiaofang. So nice to see you here in Hawaii. So you come here very short time. You just arrived. I did. Uh, I came on Monday. I'm leaving Friday. Uh -huh. uh, my son-in-law is graduating from a master's program at UH, ah. so I just dropped back for that occasion. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. So um, my first question to you. Yes. Um, you have uh, retired. I have. Right? You've been uh, in, uh, as a lawyer, tax lawyer, uh, legal expert for over 50 years. Yes, right? yes. All your life. You All, can write pretty, your own tickets. Pretty much, you can go uh, anywhere you want to. Five-sevenths of my life. Yeah. So my question is, why you choose to move to China and teaching students at Bay Wai? Yeah. You know, somehow, when I came to Hawaii in 1972, I almost immediately got involved with Chinese things. Mm. I had two big clients in Hong Kong, a British company and a Chinese company. Uh, I got involved with an acupuncture school and uh, became chairman of the board of an acupuncture college. Mm -hmm. I started going to Hong Kong uh, every couple of, uh, uh, every six months and doing business there. and. Mm -hmm. And then uh, uh, 1982, I went to Beijing for the first time when it was still uh, really a third word country. Right. And, uh, and then I went back in 94. Mm -hmm. In 2007, I was asked to take lawyers from China mm -hmm. to come to our office at the Cade Shuddy Law Firm where I was the head of the tax department. Right. And, uh, to help them learn about U.S. law and how mm -hmm. things go in the United States. These were fairly seasoned lawyers. And the reason that this, uh, I was asked to do this, I was told in 2007 mm -hmm. that there were a number of Chinese lawyers who were really smart and hardworking. They were all 35 or 40 mm -hmm. because there were no lawyers from 40 to 60 because of the Cultural Revolution. Okay. And so we began to mentor lawyers and take them there. Now we have 15 alumni from that program. Mm -hmm. and then I proceeded, because of that, to get involved with the Shanghai Bar mm -hmm. and the Suzhou Bar. Suzhou is a small second-tier city mm -hmm. about a half hour from Shanghai of 13 million people. Okay. And uh, all very interested in what's going on in the United States, how to connect mm -hmm. with the United States. And we were able to, to connect the Hawaii Bar Association, mm -hmm. a collaboration agreement with the Shanghai Bar right. and the Suzhou Bar. Mm -hmm. Between Suzhou and Shanghai, they have the same population as the state of California. I see. Isn't that incredible how yeah, many people they have? And how interested they are in American law. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, there's such an opportunity for collaboration with China. Mm -hmm. They're coming up. United States is at a peak, kind of coming down, and they're becoming more of a balanced uh, world uh, collaborators, competitors, partners. That's how I see it. Like a yin and yang. Like a yin and yang. Yeah. And the world changes all the time. We've been at the top of the heap since really mm -hmm. World War II, 70 years. Yeah. And... Uh, uh, they struggled until 1978, mm -hmm. after their revolution, after they came out of the, the, the Mao period of, you know, uh, 
complete communism. Now China calls themselves, rather than communists, they call themselves socialists with Chinese characteristics. Exactly. Yeah, yes. you know that, yes. but I'm just telling the audience. Right. And, and uh, uh, they have so much admiration for the United States, mm -hmm. appreciation for how the United States has helped them and how they've been partners to a certain extent in developing manufacturing and Everywhere you go in China, people have on American T-shirts, mm -hmm. and they may not even be able to read it. You couldn't even recognize it. It's, it's overseas Chinese or no, American. No, no, you can't the tell the difference. Um, yeah. I, when I first went to, to Beijing in 1982, everybody wore a Mao jacket and a Mao cap. Right, you can The tell. only thing you could wear was blue, <laughs> green, or brown. Right. Today, everybody's wearing blue jeans yeah. and, and yeah. T-shirts and... In fact, the big fad there is the same thing here with the jeans that are all okay. ripped up. <laughs> yeah. I know, I know. And every shopping center yeah. features uh, 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 products from everywhere in the world. Louis yeah. Vuitton and, mm -hmm. and uh, American products, everything. It, Whatever you have here, you have it in China. And what you don't have here, China also have it. That's right. Right. That's right. They, yeah. have, they have so much. For, and things are so expensive there. So I have a, I've had this experience true. three times now, <laughs> twice with friends in Hong Kong and yeah. once with somebody in Beijing. They said, we're going to take a trip to the United States. Mm -hmm. And my wife told me, uh -huh. bring two suitcases with nothing in it uh -huh. so they can fill it up shopping in the United States. Oh, my goodness. That's <laughs> the other way around when I traveled to U.S. Yeah. 30 years ago. Uh, yes. You know, I bring empty suitcase and a full... For China, because <laughs> yeah. it was so cheap. Cheap. Right, Everything was right. cheap. I used to stay at the Hilton in Hong Kong mm -hmm. for $25 a night in the wow. 70s. It was already, uh, I think, $75, $100 in Hawaii for a room. $25 a night and a dollar and a half for breakfast. So the question uh, is, why do you choose to teaching uh, in China? Well, uh, uh, I started a company with you <laughs> called the Asia Pacific Hi. Group. Yes. Uh, and uh, uh, we're doing a lot of interesting things there. Yeah. And Russell Liu, a Chinese lawyer who's been teaching at Baywai for about 10 years, mm -hmm. said, hey, Roger, why don't you come and teach for a semester at Baywai? Mm -hmm. And I thought it'd be an opportunity to spend more time there. My Chinese is very rough. Yeah. Maybe I learned a little more about your, the language. Uh, Chinese on your own. Well, we should EDR Putong Hua, EDN A little bit of Chinese I can speak. And, uh, uh, and I thought it'd be a good opportunity to spend more time with business with the company. Okay. And uh, learn a little bit about China, an opportunity to work with young children, young mm -hmm. children, young kids. Yeah. yeah. And uh, uh, just get to know China a little better and to have some uh, opportunity to, to work with, like I say, young children who are, I tell my kids, the, the mm -hmm. class, the Chinese-U.S. connection is if you're going to be an international lawyer or an international business person for the next 30 years, mm -hmm. this is going to be one of the most important connections, uh, aspects of mm. your doing business, yeah. how China yeah. goes with the United States. Yeah, so the Chinese uh, is also expanding, you know, the businesses, even law firm, they yes. have opening uh, branches, oh, sure. offices in, in the yes. U.S. and all over. The... I have a couple of law firms now that yeah. want me to help them open offices in the United States. Right, right. But we're going through a phase now where the Chinese are kind of talking out of both sides of their mouth. Mm -hmm. Their five-year plan is to, is to go out and invest in more places around the world, mm -hmm. but they have currency restrictions that keep people from bringing money out. Mm -hmm. So we're not seeing the kind of outflow that we will in a year or two when that, when that changes. Well, I, I think there is a, um, lots of people have questions on that. Uh, there is a special panel. Uh, the procedure you need to go, whether you are a private uh, investor or uh, SOE, yeah. uh, you have to go through the, uh, uh, let's say, uh, Ministry of Commerce right. and to file the uh, application form and, uh, you know, going through. You can through, get approval. Yeah, that way. you got to, this is the way. If you're, but if lots you're of people, opening a bigger business or you're doing something that Chinese want, yeah, particularly yeah. a business that has IP, 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then you can get permission. Yeah. But you can't buy a house, and it's hard to buy a small business. And you have to demonstrate that you really want to be in business. Mm -hmm. You're not just mm -hmm. trying to get money out of the country. Yeah. Or you're not just trying to get connected so eventually you can move to the United States. Right. So, um, yeah, you know, what was the most uh, inspiring uh, time uh, you saw or learned in China during these uh, past two months? Well, I've been devoting a lot of time to the students. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've been a, I've been enjoying that. I have two classes that I teach in legal writing. Now yeah. these are classes learning American law, American case law in English. Mm -hmm. And so uh, uh, I'm amazed at how you could you know you got to be pretty smart to learn a whole legal system in a foreign language. Yeah. But the girl students, the women students, are much more. Uh, invested, much more focused than mm. the men. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, <laughs> of the 22 students in each class, mm. four are men and 18 are women. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I've been trying to help them <laughs> a little bit. Uh -huh. And I had, I had a student who uh, was not doing too well. Mm. Uh, so I've been there already. It's a for, girl or uh, a boy? guy. Oh, a guy. A guy. Okay. I've been trying to help the guys because they're not, they're struggling. Right. I asked people why the guys aren't doing so well. He said, "Well, we're in a foreign language is a is a big part of these classes, mm -hmm. and the women are just better in mm, in linguistics, uh -huh. and the boys get discouraged, mm. and they don't want to participate. They all, both classes. They have boys sit in the back, <laughs> and the girls sit in the front. Oh, okay. and yeah. so." There's this one kid, his name is K-R-A-L, Kral. Uh -huh. And he's, a, he's kind of a, I mean, the kid, they're only 18, 19 years old. They're second year undergraduate students in the law program. Mm -hmm. So anyway, he turns in a paper that's really good. Oh. We've been doing this for six, eight weeks. Mm -hmm. And I said, Kral, this paper you turned in was really good. Mm. And he says, well... He said, I just listened to what you told us was wrong about the papers last week, and I fixed it. Ah. And I thought, that's incredible. That's so maybe he doesn't do. need a help. He, he doesn't now, and he yeah. speaks up in class now. Good, good. And interestingly, none of the girls will speak up. Mm. If you ask them a question, all 20 of them will kind of look down. Mm -hmm. Okay, who has who would like to comment on this? Everybody's looking <laughs> down like that. So, Roger, we take a break, uh -huh. and uh, it's for the commercial, and okay. we'll be right back. Okay. This is Think Tech Hawaii raising public awareness. My name is Mark Shklov. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii, Law Across the Sea. Law Across the Sea is on Think Tech Hawaii every other Monday at 11 a.m. Please join me where my guests talk about law topics and ideas and music and Hawaiiana all across the sea from Hawaii and back again. Aloha. Welcome back. So, uh, Roger, what are the Chinese, young Chinese people are thinking about? What they're thinking, you know, their family like, and, uh, you know, thinking themselves, their personal family, and uh, their goals, and their life, you know, stuff that we're young, young American think about. Yeah, I think the same. I mm. think it's very similar in the sense that they come to college, they want to get an education, they want to have a career. Mm -hmm. They're very focused on uh, career and money, making money. Mm -hmm. uh, remember, the Chinese didn't have anything. Their parents had nothing. Right. And China didn't really get going until after Tiananmen Square. Mm -hmm. uh, they opened up out of total communist 
you can't even own property in 78, 1978, mm -hmm. to beginning to have uh, your own farm mm -hmm. and then real mm -hmm. estate development. A lot of people made a lot of money, but a mm -hmm. lot of people didn't. And then starting about 89 or 90, mm -hmm. things started to grow dramatically. Shanghai opened up, mm -hmm. became a financial center. Mm -hmm. And so now, 25 years later, uh, the children of people who have made some money mm -hmm. uh, want to see their careers grow. They want to find a way uh, to be successful. Mm -hmm. uh, I think they need a lot of education. I think they need a lot of understanding as a lawyer about ethics. Mm -hmm. uh, the law is not the same law. Right. People in China don't look at the law the same way mm -hmm. uh, as we do. It's almost, well, the law is something you try to get around right. so you don't have to deal with it. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I see them interested, and they're phenomenally interested in the United States. Remember, I'm teaching legal writing, mm -hmm. American case law, the kids at undergraduate school in China. <laughs> right. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I think they want to know about uh, what's going on in the United States, mm. uh, and they want to understand uh, how that relates to their career and what's happening in China. Mm -hmm. So that's what I mostly see. And I try to introduce them to some thoughts about ethical business mm -hmm. and uh, ethical law, mm -hmm. and as well as understanding, uh, you know, how to understand a case, how to read. You know, China's a civil law country. Mm -hmm. And so the reason they're studying American case law is because international business is all done in English mm -hmm. and it's all based on the common law. Contracts are based on common law. Right. Torts are based on common law. Mm -hmm. So if you want to be in an international program, mm -hmm. you need to understand that. Mm -hmm. And everybody speaks English in the business world. Mm -hmm. And you might as well study American law for right. case law as anything else because right. we're still the leaders in the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's what I think, uh, I, I, you know, the Chinese still have a tremendous reverence for family. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody there pretty much is an only child because they had a right. one child policy. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm told by all my fellow teachers that all the kids are spoiled rotten. <laughs> and really? Yeah. And you need to give them responsibility and you need to let them stand up and speak. And so I get them to do that. Mm. And I, I, they're very, uh, I give some long homework assignments to write mm -hmm. material for, and, and then they come to class and we go over it. And then I get them to uh, stand up and, and present what we've talked. Mm -hmm. I also get them to uh, uh, go over each other's papers. Mm -hmm. So they, they learn how to critique mm -hmm. another paper. And I make them, I tell them. You'd be hard on this person. <laughs> right. They're not used to that, but, right. but that's what you need to do. Mm -hmm. And I also tell them that it's not all about competition. You learn to collaborate. When you practice law, uh, you usually have co-counsel. If you're in a big law firm, you may have three or four other lawyers working on this mm -hmm. case. So make sure you get the best possible product. You do the best job you can. Mm -hmm. Take responsibility. Do the best job you can. You want to work with two or three people on this? Fine. You guys work together. Get the best possible result you can. Mm -hmm. And I, I be, I'm very, uh, I think that this is a good group. I think this is a good time for China. These are not people who grew up in the Depression era like my parents did right. in China. The Depression was kind of maybe through 1990, but certainly through the 70s, up mm -hmm. until 80, 82. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, oh, so they have a different mentality. Different time. Different time. The times. world is the people seems to come together. I think so. Know? I think it's almost so, like the 50s and 60s in the United States. Mm -hmm. That's kind of how I see it. And, and they have the same opportunity in China that, that my generation had in the 50s and 60s. Mm -hmm. Life is open for them. The parents have enough money to give them an education. Mm -hmm. They're going to travel. The world is so much more global now. Everybody has two iPhones. So what do you see the motivation from the students? Why they pick the law? And... Uh, that's a good question. I think some of it has to do with economics. Mm. They see the law as a good way to make money. Okay. Uh, 
it's also a way uh, to get an education right. uh, that you can that's that's usable. I mean, you get an undergraduate degree anywhere. What mm -hmm. do you do with it? Right. So if you want to be a lawyer, now you've got something when you come out of school, and I think there's a there's a, there's an interest in that. So describe what is your what is your day look like? You wake up in the morning. You're, you know. Um... Well, I've got a nice situation there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wake up. My first class on Monday is eight to ten. Okay. So I go to class, and uh, we you have, have a, a breakfast before that. Yeah, I have breakfast in my room. My room is is two buildings from where I teach. Okay. So I have, <laughs> I get up. I have a little room. Yeah. Uh, has a has a living room and a and a separate bedroom and a uh -huh. uh, bathroom. It's right in a dormitory on this on campus. Right. And then uh, I go to the class. I teach, and then I have another class at one o'clock. Mm a tax law class. So I'm teaching two legal writings and one tax law class. Okay. And uh, then I'm finished for the day. I'm off Tuesday. Mm -hmm. And I have one more legal writing class from 10 to 12 mm -hmm. on Wednesday. Uh, and then I'm off the rest of the week. But I got to grade papers. I got to yeah. prepare for the class. Right. I've gotten into a routine that's much better. And then, of course, we have our company, which is on the other side of town. Yeah. And I, as you know, go over there and do some work over there, and we have some meetings, and right. we've been to a couple of cities since I've been there. Right. Uh, I did a great thing. This is a wonderful thing. I bought a bicycle. And I I'm know. I'm having so I, much I fun the, on my uh, bicycle. Yeah. And I, so you uh, ride that to Summer Palace. I rode to the Summer Palace. Yeah. I, I rode to, there's so many nice parks in China. Oh, yeah. And a China, a Beijing is almost flat. It's so beautiful. It's I, a beautiful I, city. I well, it's not a fascinatingly interesting city because they've torn down so many old buildings and built new ones. But the parks are wonderful. But there is uh, remaining. There are the some old remaining buildings things, yeah. and the walls, and they refurnish. In some and, places, they have refurbished, and yeah. it, it is nice. It is. Yeah. It is. And I'm getting to know the city so much better on my bike. Mm. So mm. now I'll work a couple. So I'm, after Wednesday, I'm off from Wednesday till Monday. Mm -hmm. But I'll always have papers to correct and prepare yeah. for the next class. So I can work a few hours, get on my bike, take a two or three hour bike ride around the city. So come back. now you're really actually living in China and you're working in China with especially the young children. Yeah. Yes. I mean, young students. Right. So what is the change? Is there any change of your view or learned or gained or uh, underst better understanding about China, what's happening? You know? know, I've been going to China regularly since 2011, twice yeah. a year, go there for two or three weeks. So mm -hmm. I'm there for like a month, month and a half, uh, mostly in Shanghai and Suzhou. And Beijing's a little bit different. But, but you're living in a hotel. You're meeting with the businesses. And yes. This is such a different setting, right? It is. It's, it it's is. really living, and you see a lot what you didn't see when you were in business trip. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think you're on campus, too, and that's a little yeah. bit of a special kind of world. Mm -hmm. But I'm really fascinated in the young people, and I mm -hmm. think the young people in both our country and China mm -hmm. really need help and guidance. Yeah. And they have an opportunity to change the world. You see how difficult things are in the United States today. We're having so many confrontations. Uh, does our kind of democracy work anymore? Uh, one person, one vote, when you can gerrymander, when you've got people who are so against. Mm -hmm. Does it work in what goes on in China? I mean, uh, China is uh, up and coming, and everybody's optimistic uh, because their parents had it so much worse. In the United States, uh, uh, you know, I'm in my 70s now. We've got generations who are looking back two generations to me saying, you had it really good. I can't even buy a house anymore. Right. So. On the other hand, China's got all its problems with civil rights. People can't speak. There are people who are afraid to talk. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, so that's not good. So I see that generation, you know, the 20-somethings, the, uh, uh, up to 30 maybe, needing to come together, mm -hmm. being citizens of the world, maybe find a little better way to, to govern. Mm. Find a little better social structure. Right, right. And I like being a part of that. Mm. This is a small piece. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping to learn more. I'm working with some, I'm meeting a lot of interesting people in China mm -hmm. who have the same kind of goals. And who, here's something that bothers me. Mm. Uh, I, I mentioned to you how 
how much admiration there was for the United States and how people all look. You, you, you walk down the street, you could be anywhere in the world, in the United States, in Europe. Uh, uh, people are, the guy on the street is not happy with what Mr. Trump is doing. Right well, or wrong? Our time is just coming to, uh, <laughs> I have a lot of questions. And, uh, you know, um, I really feel that U.S. and China has so much to offer with one another. Yes. You know, it's maybe not just one answer. It's a collaboration. And this is a new time, new world. Yes. The new generation with a new mind. And uh, I'm really looking forward to, uh, to the, uh, you know, more collaboration. Yes. But with I a better too. understanding. So better I hope you have a lot of fun. <laughs> I know you're going to be returned back to China very soon. Yeah. And uh, um, I hope that one day we'll bring you back for another uh, interview. Okay, uh, after maybe the completion of your semester. Okay, sounds good. So that's all the time we have today. My name is Xiao Feng, and we have been talking to Roger Epstein, who will be living for China once again. And we wish him a safe trip. Until next episode, aloha. Aloha.